Welcome to Celebrating Life in Science. I'm Joan Kerber Walker, President and CEO of AZ Bio, the Arizona Bioindustry Association. The people working within Arizona's bioscience sector share a common bond and a commitment to making life better for people in Arizona, across the United States, and around the world. It's my great privilege to work with and learn from Arizona educators, researchers, entrepreneurs, and healthcare professionals who live at the crossroads of life and science. Tonight, we invite you to get to know some of our Arizona innovators as we share their stories. What they do impact our lives today and shapes our opportunities for better health in the future. To get us started, we have invited a very special guest. He is a longtime champion for Arizona's life science sector and has been repeatedly reminding us that now, more than ever, it is important to make good decisions and follow the science. Hello, this is Governor Doug Ducey joining you to celebrate Arizona's bioscience sector. It's my pleasure to introduce you to some of the sector's leaders. For over 20 years, the people of Arizona have strategically invested in the biosciences. We've built and expanded our world-class research institutes, including TGen, the ASU Biodesign Institute, the Bio5 Institute, and the Arizona Cancer Center at the University of Arizona along with the Barrow Neurological Institute, the Arizona Alzheimer's Consortium, and more. Arizona's hospital systems have also grown dramatically over the last two decades, more than doubling the number of skilled healthcare professionals who work day and night to support patients and their families from around the world. And Arizona's medical schools at the University of Arizona, Mayo Clinic, Midwestern University, A.T. Still, and Creighton University are training the next generation of physicians and medical professionals to help meet the needs of our growing communities. Over 300,000 Arizonans work in healthcare and the biosciences and their impact is worldwide. Medical device companies like BD, Dexcom, Medtronic, MERS, and WL Gore delivering life-saving products Innovators like Roche Tissue Diagnostics, equipping oncologists to diagnose and treat disease. Celgene, part of Bristol-Myers Squibb, making an important drug to treat cancers and so much more. In 2020, as we rise to meet the challenge of COVID-19, our investments in bioscience and healthcare infrastructure are more important than ever. The teams at SonoraQuest, ASU Biodesign, the University of Arizona, and others have been essential partners in getting Arizonans the test they need. Arizona's healthcare workers have served with compassion and care in the face of adversity. And our citizens continue to do their part every day to slow the spread of this virus. Since the pandemic began, Arizona has been guided by data and science and tonight, you'll have the opportunity to get to know some of the faces behind the science as they work to discover, develop, and deliver healthcare products and services. To everyone watching, thank you for joining us. And thank you for everything you are doing to help Arizona through this crisis. Let's remember, we'll get through this together, and we're stronger together. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Ducey. We are stronger together, thanks to the people across our state. They volunteered, sacrificed, worked together, and helped each other in so many ways. They are on the front lines of this pandemic, and they are examples of what makes Arizona so special.
everyone across our state for what you have done and what you continue to do in these challenging times. And thank you to Michael Fitzpatrick, founder of Millennia Music and musical director for the Muhammad Ali Humanitarian Awards for sharing his performance of Hayden's Cello Concerto in C major accompanied by the Orchestra dell'Accademia Nationale di Santa Cecilia from Rome, Italy. Dr. Jeffrey Trent is a visionary leader who has never stopped working to find answers for patients. He is one of the most respected genomic scientists in the world and is being honored in 2020 with the AZ Bio Pioneer Award for Lifetime Achievement. As president and research director of the Translational Genomics Research Institute, an affiliate of City of Hope, he continues to work to seek out and find important insights into the genetic basis of cancer, while leading a team of scientists who are working to find answers to some of our greatest health challenges. We sat down recently to discuss his journey his work, and the impact Chijen is making on the lives in the people in our community. When you were at NIH, you developed a vision for a translational research institute to leverage what we were learning about the human genome. What is translational research, and how is that different from basic research or clinical research? Translational research is looking in the eye of the person across from you and saying, I'm going to make a difference for you today 
How can I use every bit of existing information, every bit of existing data to make a difference for the individual? To me, that is the roadmap for translational research. We build on basic research, of course, understanding pathways that allow us to develop drugs that could certainly be more targeted, but, but how do we pull together the information? It's really an information play uh, that is so critically important. And it's making a difference right now in the lives of people around the world. Whether it's uh, cancer data, uh, whether it's COVID data, the ability for us to see data broadly across the world has never been greater than it is today. When we look at bringing TGen to Arizona, you know, a lot of people don't know that you are a, nation, a native Phoenician. You had this super high-powered job at the NIH and you were doing all this important work. What brought you home? The opportunity at the NIH to participate in the completion of the first human genome project was outstanding. The opportunity, though, to take that information and use it to benefit an individual patient sitting across from you today was really what drove me to think that the NIH is a great place for these common good projects, but if we could come up with a, a strategy to have a nonprofit research institute sit in between industry, academia, and government, that would be the model for the future. Tijin's work and your work you know, has been very focused on cancer, but cancer is not the only thing that happens at TGen. What are some of the other health challenges that TGen researchers are working on today? Yeah, so here in our headquarters building by Copper Square in Flagstaff with our TGen North group and at uh, Honor Health with our clinical trials group with our rare childhood clinics. We work broadly across disease areas that range from cancer, neurologic diseases, pathogens like COVID, plague, and a number of others. Really, we're much more like an area that focuses on human health and disease than we are one that focuses only on cancer. In 2016, TGen formed an alliance with City of Hope. How has that helped to move TGen's work on behalf of patients and their families? Well, you know, City of Hope's 150 years old. They're able to focus effort and energy, particularly in cancer. And they're an area that has been among the leaders in the immune treatments, are using our own body's immune system to actually implement uh, changes in, in disease, particularly in the area of cancer treatment. The opportunities that in genomics had not been those that r really were the focus of effort at City of Hope. So bringing these two groups together, one that's focused particularly on immunology, one that's focused on genomics, how those two have come together has been remarkably transforming. TGen has been a cornerstone of hope for so many people. What is your hope for the future of science? In the area of human health, in the area of using these tools and technologies, we have to combine efforts to make a difference. And Arizona in the past has been a collaborative, cooperative state. We need to continue to be, uh, to really uh, band together uh, to be able to accomplish things that hopefully uh, very few uh, will be able to even come close to accomplishing. So delighted to be here. Great decision to put TGen in the midst of this uh, uh, wonderful state and hoping we continue to make a difference for the future. The next generation of science pioneers is developing right now. They are the students in our schools, community colleges, and universities. Programs like the SciTech Festival, Arizona's annual statewide celebration of science, technology, engineering, and math includes thousands of events that are held in diverse neighborhoods across and throughout the state. These events are designed to create, to excite, and inform Arizonans from ages three to 103 about how STEM will drive our state for the next 100 years. A unique opportunity for motivated Arizona high school students 
with a strong interest in bioscience, engineering, environmental health, or biostatistics, gives these future scientists the opportunity to work side by side with top faculty in the University of Arizona laboratories. It's a proven way to keep engaging youth in science. My name is Brooke Moreno, and I'm a program coordinator for the Bio5 Institute's Keys Research Internship at the University of Arizona. I am also a proud alum of the 2009 Keys class. Little did I know when I applied to be an intern at the age of 18 that over 10 years later, I would be a leader of this incredible program. Before I began my Keys internship, I was an undecided major and had never set foot on the university campus. I was assigned to the lab of Dr. Hedwin Brooks and what a perfect match that was. Dr. Brooks and the key staff helped me realize what I was capable of, and Dr. Brooks invited me to continue in her lab once I started college. Participating in the Keys program opened so many doors for me. When I discovered they were hiring a student worker, I jumped at the opportunity to help other high school students explore their scientific passions. During my time as a student worker, I fell in love with education. So much so, I switched my major to science education with an emphasis in biology. I am now a state certified science teacher and a full-time staff member for the Keys program. I could have never known the great impact Keys would have on my life. I get to wake up every day and be a mentor to the next generation of scientists by combining my love of science and teaching. Keys was designed to give talented and diverse high school students the unique opportunity to spend a summer taking what they previously learned in science classrooms from across Arizona and putting that knowledge into action, working in a world-class research lab at the U of A. The Keys internship was a great opportunity for me to get lab experience over the summer. Keys allows students to explore their passion for scientific discovery while developing new knowledge, new skills, and the kind of authentic self-confidence that can only come from tackling something challenging. The Keys faculty provided me training in biotech and science literacy, so I was ready to hit the ground running. Each summer, Keys interns collaborate with scientists, engineers, and physician researchers on projects as diverse as their interests. Over 158 University of Arizona faculty have mentored Keys interns since we began the program in 2007. I'm Jordan Pilch, a Keys alum from 2017. In addition, I'm also a student assistant on the Bio5 Institute's public affairs team. My Keys internship provided an invaluable hands-on research experience and taught me how to persevere through difficult assignments, sometimes frustrating scientific results, and personal challenges. It also helped me hone my problem-solving skills, build confidence, and establish friendships that I still benefit from today. Having just completed our 14th year of the program, we now count 526 interns representing over 87 different high schools from across the state as Keys alumni. Most say that their Keys experience greatly influenced their college choice and career aspirations. Keys alumni have used the program's impact to apply for prominent academic awards and scholarships and prestigious paid internships and jobs. One example of this pipeline building effect is that 14 Keys alum have gone on to become Flint scholars. This highly competitive and coveted merit-based award for Arizona high school seniors covers the full cost for tuition, mandatory fees, housing, meals, and a myriad of exclusive opportunities at one of our state's three public universities. We are proud to say that Keys helps prepare future leaders by strengthening their ability to excel in STEM fields, pursue advanced degrees, attend Arizona's public universities in high percentages, be productive members of our workforce, and give back to the program and our state. Dr. Carl Yamashiro is an associate clinical professor and the program coordinator for the Biomedical Diagnostics Master's Degree Program in the College of Health Solutions at Arizona State University. He works closely with industry to ensure that his students graduate with the knowledge they will need to succeed in this rapidly evolving field by engaging students on real world projects. Since launching in 2014, the Biomedical Diagnostics Applied Research Program has partnered with 40 organizations and institutions to offer students a unique, real-world experience 
while building a collaborative bridge with industry. Carl Yamashiro has been named the Michael A. Kasanovich Arizona Bioscience Educator of the Year for his ongoing work to prepare scientists, healthcare teams, and industry executives to leverage the power of diagnostics so that they can deliver better health solutions. There are three types of tests out there. There is one that is used for the detection of the virus using a technique called PCR, uh, and that is used basically to determine whether a person has an active infection. The second test is an antigen test, which is also a way of detecting the virus using different methods and different markers to identify whether the virus is present in an individual. And if that comes up positive, then the person also will be identified as having an active infection. The third type of test is one that is looking for antibodies made against the virus. So these are typically called antibody tests or serology tests, where one takes some blood and be able to analyze for the presence of antibodies that have been made um, in response to an infection by the virus. And this allows one to determine whether someone has been previously infected and also can provide evidence that they may have uh, basic protection against the virus for future infections. Although uh, it's at this time, based on the knowledge that we have, it's not guaranteed that if you are positive with an antibody test that you definitely have protection against the uh, virus itself um, when you're exposed in the future. The ASU team here through the Biomedical Diagnostics Program, really driven by Mar Aspinall and Nate Wade within the College of Health Solutions, has engaged with the World Economic Forum and the Rockefeller Foundation to basically be able to gather and uh, analyze and then to dis disseminate information to the public, to especially businesses out there that are looking to reopen and to reopen more safely. I've always enjoyed teaching. I was still a teacher or a mentor to many of the employees that I've hired uh, in the companies that I worked at. I was at a crossroads at the time, uh, about six, over six years ago, where I was looking for something different to do. And so I looked at ASU, and I was uh, at ASU for a number of years before that, but I looked at ASU and I saw an announcement basically describing the International School of Biomedical Diagnostics. This intrigued me. I also saw that within this school that there would be a master's degree in biomedical diagnostics that would be offered. I'd like to thank all the students that I've had over the years uh, of teaching this. It's, we're now entering our seventh year. Uh, we've had 200 uh, graduates and I look forward to working with uh, more students and hopefully helping them on their path to become future leaders in this field. For many of us, 2020 was the year when working from home and virtual meetings became the norm. But when it comes to discovering, developing, and delivering state-of-the-art med tech and biopharmaceutical products and service, you need highly specialized facilities where life science innovators can do what they do. Arizona's commitment to building its bioscience sector over the last two decades has resulted in a building boom of high-tech facilities across the state. The Biodesign Institute on Arizona State University's Tempe campus plays a critical role in advancing the research mission of Arizona State University and represents Arizona's single largest research infrastructure investment in the biosciences. In Southern Arizona, the Bio5 Institute and the new Bioscience Research Lab at the University of Arizona are home to collaborative teams that work to develop targeted cancer drugs, understand Alzheimer's disease, prevent and cure asthma and diabetes, 
and develop more resistant crops and create more nutritious food. Now, join me as Adolfo R. Navarro, a member of the team at the University of Arizona College of Medicine, Phoenix, takes us inside the Phoenix Biomedical Campus. Welcome to Phoenix Biomedical Campus, a vibrant place to transform, discover, and collaborate with three universities and bioscience partners. The Phoenix Biomedical Campus, or PBC, spans 30 acres providing researchers, educators, students, and clinicians unique opportunities to spark collaboration and growth in the biomedical industry. The PBC sits on the City of Phoenix's own land and was established in 2004 by an initiative between the City, University of Arizona, Arizona State University, and the Arizona Border Regents to expand medical education and research in Phoenix. The University of Arizona College of Medicine Phoenix is the anchor of the campus. As a result of its high concentration of research scientists and physicians, the PBC has become a premier and dynamic location for biomedical research. The University of Arizona Health Sciences presence in Phoenix includes the medical school, nursing, pharmacy, and the Melanina Zuckerman College of Public Health. The University of Arizona's Eller College of Management is also on campus. The campus is the only site where you'll find all three Arizona's public universities in one location conducting and collaborating in research. Additionally, NAU has close to 600 students on campus studying athletic training, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and physician's assistant programs. Also included on the campus is the Translational Genomics Research Institute known for its groundbreaking research. Phoenix Union Bioscience High School, Arizona State University College of Health Solutions, University of Arizona Cancer Center at St. Joseph's, National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, and more. At full build-out, the Phoenix Biomedical Campus is anticipated to generate an economic impact of $2.1 billion annually. The Phoenix Biomedical Campus has come a long way since 2004 and boasts institutes of excellence in precision medicine, genomics, molecular medicine, cancer research, healthcare analytics, and others. Nowhere is this more concentrated than on the Phoenix Biomedical Campus. The state of Arizona has committed over $1.5 billion to building our research infrastructure over the last two decades. Buildings, labs, and equipment are essential infrastructure for scientific exploration, but scientists are the ones that bring it to life. In 2000, Thanks to the vision of Governor Jane D. Hall, the people of Arizona voted for Education 2000 Initiative, or Prop 301. Its 0.6 cent sales tax includes a tiny fraction to support research within our universities as part of TRIF, the Technology Research Initiative Fund. Thanks to the people of Arizona and those tiny fractions that have added up to over $1 billion in research investments in the past 20 years. The funding supports programs like Keys Internships, student researchers who are employed to work side by side with our world-class scientists, and has allowed Arizona to attract world-class talent. One of the researchers that TRIF helped bring home to Arizona is Dr. Joshua LaBear, Executive Director of the Biodesign Institute at Arizona State University and the 2020 Arizona Bioscience Leader of the Year. This is the biggest pandemic in over a century. It is the, certainly the biggest epidemic in our generation's lifetime and in many generations before that as well. And it's serious. When all of this began and we realized that there, the world was facing and certainly our community was facing this pandemic, we realized that it required all these different disciplines to solve the problem. And of course, the Biodesign Institute was created to bring together people from different backgrounds to work together in teams to solve specific problems. And so, it occurred to me that if there was ever a biodesign moment, this was it. So I actually grew up here in Arizona. I was born in upstate New York, but I grew up here 
with all my schooling through high school here. I left uh, Arizona to go to college at UC Berkeley, and then from there did medical school and graduate school at University of California, San Francisco. I did my medical training in Boston uh, at the Brigham Women's Hospital, where I did internal medicine, and then became a, a board-certified medical oncologist after my training at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute. My background in research has always been centered around diagnostics. We also had a large project, a contract that we did with an agency called BARDA, which is part of the Department of Health and Human Services, to identify and develop biomarkers that could detect if a person had been exposed to radiation. We had to be able to test 400,000 people in a single week, and we had to be able to develop those markers under conditions that were compatible with getting FDA clearance. And of course, the test that we had developed used a technology called qPCR or quantitative PCR, which is the same technology that is used to detect the COVID-19 virus, SARS-CoV-2. And we could pivot that equipment, that technology, all that knowledge and know-how over to SARS-CoV-2 testing and actually develop a platform here at ASU. There were early reports and publications that indicated that as many as 40% or even 50% of people who are transmitting the virus either were pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic. That meant that there were a lot of people out there who were transferring the virus from person to person who didn't even know that they were sick at the time. And the only way to find those people and to prevent them from spreading it is to do some testing. And at the time that we developed our test, there was very little testing available. I'm very privileged because I'm leading an outstanding group of people, people who are all extremely talented at what they do and who are absolutely 100% committed to the mission that we are after here. That makes my job pretty easy. This is not just research for the sake of research, but this is research and effort for the sake of saving people and helping them stay healthy. Each day, Dr. LeBaire ends his team meetings with the same call to action. Let's go save some lives. And that is what biodesign researchers do. But it's more than that. Researchers at the Biodesign Institute are exploring new frontiers in science and looking for ways to improve the quality of life for people of all ages and all around the world. One of these researchers is the 2020 Arizona Bioscience Researcher of the Year. I am Rosa Krahmalnik Brown. I am originally from Mexico City. I came to the US to get a PhD in environmental engineering at Georgia Tech. And at the end of my PhD, I was recruited to come to ASU, where I have been for 15 years. I'm an environmental engineer by training, but I have always worked with microbes that provide some service to society. The gut microbiome or the gut is just another environment. And so I started working on how this environment affects the microbes and how the microbes affect this environment. At the gene level, we're 1% human and 99% microbes. Microorganisms help us with functions that are simple or complex. The most simple ones are digest our food and get more calories and energies and nutrients out of our food. They produce vitamins that are important for us. They train our immune system. They protect the lining or, or intestines, for example. They protect us against pathogens. A function of microorganisms that we have been studying more recently is um, how they produce chemicals that can interact with our brain and change um, our behavior. Microbiota transfer therapy is transferring microbes from a very, very healthy individual to one that is lacking beneficial microbes. And we treated 18 children with autism. And at the end of the treatment, the 80% of their gastrointestinal symptoms were gone. And two years later, 15 of the kids that we treated in the beginning were categorized as severe autism at the end of the study. Only three remained in severe autism, and we actually had eight participants that um, fell on the category that was below the cutoff for mild autism. Thanks to these exciting results, FDA has actually granted fast track for microbiota transfer therapy 
uh, for autism disorders. In the theology of autism, there is a small component that it's genetic, um, a component that it's environmental, and now we're seeing that there could be a component that it's the microbes that live in our intestines. The environment affects the microbes and the microbes affect the environment. So this is an important link of, of what I do and who I am and how this also can affect the theology of um, autism. I think support comes in many different ways and I have had a lot of support from my colleagues and from my collaborators. So I, I, I think that's one that I need to mention. Jim Adams, of course, has been an, an amazing collaborator with autism. Bruce Rittman, who is the person that brought me to biodesign and is the, the director of my, the previous center where I work has also been a great supporter and helper, but I also have gotten support, of course, from funding agencies, which I wouldn't have come this far without that support. The innovation process begins with discovery, but it takes hardworking teams within our businesses to turn an idea into reality that makes life better for people in Arizona, across the United States, and around the world. I'm Sandra Watson, President and CEO of the Arizona Commerce Authority and a member of the AZ Bio Board of Directors. Under Governor Ducey's leadership, the Arizona Commerce Authority is at the forefront of statewide economic development. We use a three-pronged approach to create new opportunities for Arizonans, attract out-of-state companies to expand in our state, helping existing Arizona companies expand their operations and create new jobs, and partner with entrepreneurs to create new businesses and commercialize new technologies. It is my pleasure to introduce you to three inspiring Arizona businesses that are making a difference at the crossroads of business and science. The first is Fabric, a Tempe-based incubator that rapidly pivoted during the pandemic. Fabric is a fashion incubator, it's a business accelerator, it's a design studio, it's an academy, and it's a manufacturer all rolled into one. We're sustainably reinventing, disrupting, reshoring the fashion industry for the modern apparel entrepreneur. So we basically offer everything under one roof that an entrepreneur would need in order to create a sewn product here domestically and get it to market. We came up with the idea to make FDA-approved reusable isolation gowns as a reaction to the effect that COVID-19 was having on our fashion incubator. All of the clients we served were non-essential. The main revenue sources for the incubator were non-essential, like events and renting out the spaces and a maker space. All of those things involve a lot of people in tight tight areas, which just isn't safe. We knew we had the expertise to source, design, and develop a gown. It was then working on getting the FDA approval that we tackled next. When the pandemic hit and we wanted to pivot and start making reusable isolation gowns and mitigate the PPE shortage, we had a lot of amazing support. It started with AZ Bio actually coming together and kind of helping connect the dots and help us put the word out there in the form of a GoFundMe. And eventually, over the months that we've been doing this, nine different organizations have come together to support our efforts and contribute to us being able to acquire all the equipment and FDA certification and ramp up our efforts in our building to be able to mitigate the PPE shortage. So it was a community effort. Getting FDA certification so we could ramp up production was and is still the biggest obstacle that we have, but it required first applying to become an FDA registered um, entity. Then you need to actually submit all of the requirements the FDA has for level two and three gowns. You also need to have a manufacturing environment that meets those standards as well. We continue to work on training and up the bar on what we need to do to make sure that these FDA gowns that we're providing to our local healthcare professionals are the safest and most effective they can possibly be. Since COVID-19, our mission hasn't really changed. It's just been added on to. So we're still helping apparel entrepreneurs with all the design and development and no minimum manufacturing of their products. But in addition to helping apparel entrepreneurs make niche products in small quantities, 
we're also making hundreds of thousands of reusable isolation gowns as a high capacity factory on top of the fashion incubator model. So we've helped almost 500 brands go from idea to production and then they were growing which was our goal and we'd have to send them out of state because we did not have the high capacity expertise or equipment to be able to make large orders. Because of the urgency in being able to make so many gowns so quickly, we now have the capacity and expertise to help our brands. And it really helps us fulfill the mission of our foundation, which was to sustainably grow Arizona's fashion industry. Our goal was always to provide a 21st century manufacturing solution, which wasn't at the cost of people or planet, which is what's happening overseas, be able to manufacture here in Arizona sustainably, responsibly, and help grow the industry. And this whole process has really allowed us to create a brand name that can help us with the capital cost to support more entrepreneurs and the capacity to be able to also help them grow their businesses right here in the state. As the incredible team at Fabric was innovating and working hard to make critical protective personal equipment for our frontline medical staff, the team at GenoSensor was developing a highly sensitive, accurate genomic test that qualified laboratories could use to determine when a person has the virus that causes COVID-19. On April 16th, GenoSensor received an emergency use authorization from the Food and Drug Administration for the first COVID-19 PCR test kit that was developed by an Arizona-based company. GenoSensor's mission is to improve uh, human health care by providing products and services for genomic research, for drug screening, gene screening, drug development, and vaccine development. So genomics is basically what we do. And this COVID-19 is an RNA virus. So naturally, it is a part of our study, part of our work. Genome Sensor has developed this GS COVID-19 RT-PCR kit. The company has been involved in DNA RNA genetics research for many years. So we are naturally able to develop this very quickly, very deeply. Genome Sensor team is so excited that our product has finally got a FDA EUA use approval. And this whole journey is not easy. FDA has the highest standard, the toughest agency in the whole world. And our team worked even harder so that our product finally got FDA EUA use. And this is a tremendous honor. We are even more excited that our product can serve the community, not only our local Arizona, but United States and worldwide. Throughout this uh, development and research work, we are able uh, to engage more with the society, with uh, the, a lot of organizations, and also have a very, very deep conversations in our local communities, AG Bio, and even governors, and the senators' offices and try to understand what their needs are and then we are able to meet their goals. Genome Sensor has to see a very, very big challenge ahead of us through this COVID-19 outbreak. We've seen that genetic information and technology can widely apply to diagnosis, drug development, vaccine development, even preventive medicine. Our goal, our passion is really to engage uh, this field to help humans improve their health. Genome Sensor team is ready for the challenge. And we are excited to serve our community, to serve mankind. Excellent leadership by the Genome Sensor team. In 2020, COVID-19 became the third highest cause of death in the United States. For every life that has been lost and every family that is grieving, our hearts go out to you. Yet when COVID-19 appeared, other diseases did not go away. Cancer is the number two killer in the United States. According to the National Cancer Institute, there are over 100 different types of cancer. 
let's learn how Scottsdale-based systems oncology is using artificial intelligence to reduce the size of the cancer universe and save lives. Despite massive investment in cancer research and therapy worldwide, still 9.6 million people will die each year of various forms of cancer. We see that as a failure to understand the fundamental systems that drive cancer cell evolution and drug resistance. Our mission is to solve this fundamental problem. With the power of AI, we can discover novel systems level insights into cancer evolution and drug resistance. And that is what's needed to get to the next generation of curative drugs. Artificial intelligence allows us to explore a much bigger, more expansive universe of therapeutic options, which goes far beyond human imagination. It is not easy to stop cancer. Temporary clinical response is often followed by cellular evolution that leads to drug resistance. That's what ultimately kills the patient. Using cognitive computing, we can understand the molecular mechanisms behind resistance and develop more curative therapies. That's our superpower, smarter insights and faster cures. The next phase for systems oncology is to exponentially scale up our pipeline of therapeutic programs. Our academic collaborators empower us to translate novel insights into innovative agents and that accelerates the growth of our pipeline. Our pharmaceutical partners allow us to advance multiple therapeutic programs through regulatory and commercial success. That scalable business model therefore enables us to focus on our superpower. With two deals done, Systems Oncology is well positioned to scale and to put a big dent in the cancer universe. Thank you, Sandra, for your leadership and for ACA's support of our life science community. Thanks also to Amanda Melindo of the Center for Entrepreneurial Innovation at Gateway Community College for helping our entrepreneurs tell their story with these wonderful videos. In a perfect world, our scientists and innovative companies would be able to prevent diseases or through early detection, treat them before they become life-threatening or impact our quality of life. As anyone who has struggled with a disease or has lost loved ones know, the world is not perfect. Today, we rely on our life science innovators to develop new products and services that our healthcare teams can use to help us fight and help us heal. BD Peripheral Intervention is one of those innovators and is being honored as the 2020 Arizona Bioscience Company of the Year. Join me for a conversation with Stephanie Clocky, Vice President of Research and Development at BD Peripheral Intervention to learn what it takes to make a global impact. We have launched over 12 projects in the last um, year and a half, and we're really excited about the impact that they have on our patients. You know, one specific product I'll describe is our BD Elevation Breast Biopsy System. When I think about the patients who are impacted by this device, these are women who have recently identified that they have a lump in their breast and they are at risk of cancer. They have a significant amount of stress and anxiety, and anything that we can do with our devices to help improve and minimize that stress is a big win for us. The BD breast elevation device does that. This is a handheld vacuum excision biopsy device that the physician can insert with one time and get all samples needed for the biopsy in less than 10 seconds. So any procedure that can be done in less than a minute, let alone 10 seconds, is a significant win for the patient. BD Peripheral Intervention moved into a new headquarters on the Tempe IDEA campus in March. It was really exciting and a long-awaited process to get us there. The team worked very hard to get moved in. The building is incredible. We have a fantastic state-of-the-art research and development lab that really helps us innovate and the location is just fantastic. We are located on the IDEA campus, which stands for Innovation, Discovery, Education and Arts which is perfect for us as we really are founded on innovation. When I think about our team, not only do they work all day long endlessly on bringing life-saving products to market, they also constantly give back to our community. They're involved in community walks and fundraisers. 
you know, we even had a team of about five to six people who walked from Tucson to Phoenix over a five-day period to specifically raise funds for a local veterans organization called the Fisher House. So we truly have an incredible organization of employees and they never cease to amaze. As COVID-19 has spread across the world, BD has been a key partner in the national and the global response. So BD has really made a positive impact on the current fight against COVID. And in one way, we as BD have provided more than 40 million swabs that are used for specimen collection associated with COVID-19. BD also has two diagnostic tests on the market. One is the BD Max system. The system is a molecular diagnostic PCR test that's used to diagnose COVID. Test results are obtained in about four to six hours. Uh, however, it can take longer to get back to patients due to administrative needs and as many patients are experiencing today. Uh, and then in early July, BD launched the Veritor point of care antigen test. And the benefits here is speed to diagnosis. How this works is they take a anterior nasal swab and ultimately get the results within 15 minutes to the patient. It's really incredible work that the team is doing to help um, with the fight against COVID. BD's purpose is to advance the world of health. And you know, as we've talked about, we launched more than 12 new products over the last year, but the future is extremely bright. And this year in 2020, we're launching 10 new programs. We have 20 active medical device products under development currently, and that never stops. As soon as one's finished, we're working on the next thing. Our goals are to improve healthcare, specifically in the realms of oncology, end-stage kidney disease, and peripheral arterial disease. That's our mission, and that's what we plan to do for the future. Innovative medtech and biotech companies follow the science and invest in it at levels unheard of in most industries. In 2019, these investments in research and development were more than $100 billion and that was before COVID-19. 2020 has been a year of unprecedented innovation and collaboration. Competitors are now partners. Governments are now co-developers and they have shared goals to use science to save lives. Between January and September, we've all worked together to find the answers that people around the world are waiting for. We don't have all the answers yet, but the pace of innovation is rapidly accelerating. For some global perspective, we reached out to Dr. Michelle McMurray-Heath, President and CEO of the Biotechnology Innovation Organization in Washington, DC. Bio is the world's largest trade association, representing biotechnology companies, academic institutions, state biotechnology centers, and related organizations across the United States and in more than 30 other nations. Bio members are involved in the research and development of innovative healthcare, agricultural, industrial, and environmental biotechnology products. I think as this current crisis has shown us, there are no easy scientific answers left. All the easy science has been done long ago. Now it's big science. This is the era of collaboration, and it's collaboration that must be done with patients at the table. We are an industry of sheroes and heroes, scientists committed to changing the world, improving human health, feeding the nation, and improving our environment. You really have to understand all of the various sides and the perspectives that they're bringing to the table, because these are intelligent, committed people all coming to try to answer difficult questions from different points of view. And if you understand those differences, if you respect those differences, you're a lot farther along to finding a solution that is best for all sides. So I think that's very, very important. And it's important in collaboration. We need to make sure that we build coalitions, that we bring together different points of view, different perspectives, and move forward, because this is no time for politics as usual. We have to put partisan debates aside and really focus on the science. If we are science-driven and patient-focused, we can't go wrong. And it's important for us to make sure that we leave no stone unturned in getting the support for the science that's going to save lives. Thank you, Dr. McMurray-Heath, for your insights and for everything that BIO does for our global innovation community. And thank you to you, our viewers, for joining us in celebrating life and science. 
On behalf of Arizona's healthcare and life science community, we wish you, your family, and your friends well. To learn more about how Arizona's life science innovators are working to make life better for all of us, you can visit us at azbio.org.